Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn how to count subatomic particles. So let's jump right in here and before we start learning how to count subatomic particles, we need to learn about something called atomic numbers, average atomic mass, and mass numbers. So what is the atomic number and how does it work? Well, if we take a look at the periodic table of elements, at the top of each little periodic table box, you're going to see this little number right here. For example, on potassium, you're going to see 19. On bromine, you're going to see 35. On sodium, you're going to see 11. Well, what are these numbers here? Well, these are the atomic number, people. And the periodic table is ordered by increasing atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom and the number of electrons in the electron cloud. And once again, the periodic table of elements is ordered by increasing atomic number. So if we take a look right here for potassium, it has an atomic number of 19. This means that it's got 19 protons inside of its nucleus and it has 19 electrons outside of its nucleus. If we take a look at bromine, its atomic number is 35. That means it has 35 protons inside of its nucleus and 35 electrons outside of its nucleus. If we take a look at sodium, the atomic number is 11. Therefore, you guessed it, it has 11 protons inside of its nucleus and 11 electrons outside of its nucleus. So the atomic number is the number of protons inside the nucleus uh, of each atom on the periodic table. And what gives an element, or what makes an element of a, a specific element, is the number of pro, uh, protons inside the nucleus. For example, if it's got 19 protons in it, it's going to be potassium. But if it has 20 protons in the nucleus, then it's going to be calcium, a totally different element or atom. All right, so it's the proton that gives these elements their, uh, uh, their unique. Uh, their uniqueness for the most part. That's what makes each little atom or element individual is the number of protons that are in its nucleus. The average atomic mass is a little bit different. If we take a look at the bottom of each little box on the periodic table, right, you're going to see this number right here. This is called the average atomic mass. The average atomic mass of an element is the sum of the masses of its isotopes each multiplied by its natural abundance. So when we're taking a look at the periodic table of elements, if right here you do not see a whole number and it is instead some sort of number with a decimal following it, then that is a good indication that it's an average atomic mass. It's the average of all known naturally occurring isotopes multiplied by their relative abundance. For example, if we take a look right here, there are three different naturally occurring isotopes of potassium. There's potassium, that has a mass of 39, there's a potassium that has a mass of 40, and there's a potassium isotope that has a mass of 41, right? And so the relative abundance in nature of potassium 39 is 93.2581%. So 93.2581% of uh, all the isotopes uh, that occur naturally for potassium are of this kind, potassium 39. For potassium 40, 0.0117% of the naturally occurring isotopes are going to be of this kind right here, potassium 40, and 6.7302% of all naturally occurring isotopes of potassium are going to be of this kind right here, potassium 41. So when we take their masses and multiply it by their relative abundance, we will end up with this right here, the average mass of that given isotope, right? So we do that three separate times and we end up with the average masses of that isotope throughout uh, nature and then what we can do is we can add these three values together and we will end up with this right here 39.10 actually if you multiply these or I'm sorry if you add these three together you're going to end up with 39.13 which is approximately 39.10 the reason why this is 39.10 is because these masses are just a little bit off just a little bit off. I have these as whole numbers, but they're, they're super close to this. All right, so that's how we calculate the average atomic mass. We take the, uh, the, the, the number of different naturally occurring isotopes. We then take their masses and multiply it by their relative abundance, and then we add them up. And that's what you're seeing on the periodic table of elements, the average atomic mass. Now, the average atomic mass is going to be a little bit different than the mass number. Okay, a little bit different than the mass number. Okay, the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus. 
okay this is always going to be a whole number okay protons are like people they come in whole numbers there's no such thing as 0.3 protons or 0.2 protons or 0.5 neutrons they always come in whole numbers they're like people all right so the mass number here is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom so let's suppose you're given a periodic table and instead of there being some sort of decimal number there you have a whole number right here well then that's a good indication that the periodic table you're using is using mass numbers right we're using mass numbers here so understand the difference between the average atomic mass which will be expressed as some sort of decimal and then uh, mass numbers if you take a look at the mass number here it's going to be a whole number okay so how do we figure this out how do we figure out how many protons and neutrons and electrons there are well once again this right here is the atomic number so this is going to have 19 protons it's going to have 19 electrons and then to get the number of neutrons we simply take the mass number minus the atomic number right the mass number here is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in an atom that's the total mass of the atom remember electrons have no mass at all so the total mass of an atom is protons plus neutrons and this is just the protons so if we take 39 minus 19 we will end up with 20 neutrons in the nucleus if we take a look right here we have 35 protons we have 35 electrons and then 80 minus 35 is going to be 45 neutrons inside the nucleus if we take a look at this one right here atomic number is 11 so there's 11 protons there's 11 electrons outside the nucleus and to get the number of neutrons we take the mass number minus the atomic number 23 minus 11 is going to be 12 neutrons all right so understand the difference between atomic number average atomic mass and mass number let's look at a uh, another example here all right, so what if you're given a specific isotope, right? So you're given a specific isotope like carbon-12. Well, when you, have, when, you, when you see something that's written like this, here's the element it's talking about. It's carbon, and this is the mass number, all right? This number that follows when it's written like this is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, okay? So if we wanted to figure out how many protons, electrons, and neutrons there are when you're given an isotope symbol like this right here, well then carbon-14 carbon is number six on the periodic table that's its uh, that's its atomic number so it has six protons right and it has six electrons how do we figure out the number of neutrons we take 14 minus six and that will give us the number of neutrons remember mass number minus atomic number is always the number of neutrons what about cobalt let's take a look All right, if we take a look at cobalt 59, we were talking about the cobalt isotope that has a mass number of 59. So if we take a look at the periodic table, you'll notice that cobalt has an atomic number of 27. That means it has 27 protons and 27 electrons. And to get the number of neutrons, simply take the mass number 59 minus the atomic number, <clears throat> which is 27, and you'll get uh, 32 right so there you go what about calcium 41 well if you want to figure out how many protons and electrons and neutrons are in this isotope of calcium calcium if you take a look on the periodic table is number 20 its uh, atomic number is 20 therefore it has 20 protons 20 protons 20 electrons and then to get the uh, the number of neutrons simply take the mass number minus the atomic number and you'll end up with 21 neutrons okay so if you're given the symbol like this or the uh, the isotope symbol where it shows you what isotope you're talking about that's how you're going to do it but what if you're just given the periodic table what if you're just given the periodic table and that's it and it says how many protons electrons and neutrons are there simply round this to the nearest whole number right and you'll get 12 that is uh that's going to be the mass number essentially and so we'll round that to the nearest whole number so this guy here is going to have six protons six electrons and six neutrons right 12 minus 12 minus 6 is going to be 6. What about this one right here? We can round this up to 80. So this is going to have 35 protons, 35 electrons. And if you take 80 minus 35, you're going to end up with 45 neutrons, right? And what about this one? This is 39 here. If we round this to the nearest whole number, 39. So you'll end up with 19 protons, 19 electrons, and 39 minus 19 is 20 neutrons okay so if you're only given a periodic table of elements that's how you're going to uh, answer those types of questions where you figure out how many protons neutrons and electrons there are otherwise if you're given the actual mass number 
then you can just go ahead and do it like we did here. All right, so let's take a look at a few samples and uh, go from there. All right, at this point in the video, I would go ahead and pause. I would pause the video for a few moments, break out a periodic table, and try to solve these little problems, okay? So try to solve these before I do them for you. All right, so we have aluminum 28. Aluminum is number 13 on the periodic table. It's got 13 protons, 13 electrons. To get the number of neutrons, 28 minus 13 is going to be 15 neutrons. Lithium 8, how many protons does it have? Lithium is number three on the periodic table. It's atomic numbers three, so it has three electrons and three protons, and eight minus three is going to be five neutrons. All right, what about this one? It doesn't give us the name, so we have to figure out how many protons it has. Remember, the number of protons it has tells us what atom it is. So number 15 on the periodic table is going to be phosphorus, right? This is going to be phosphorus. I'm just going to use the chemical symbol here. It's going to be phosphorus, right? So it's got 15 protons. It's got 15 electrons. And now what will the mass number be? What will the number be that comes right here? Well, that's simple. We take the protons plus the neutrons. 15 plus 16 is going to be 31. So phosphorus 31 is the name of this one. What about this one right here? Number of protons is 29. We go to our periodic table, and this is the atomic number, right? Number of protons is the atomic number. And number 29 on the periodic table is copper, right? It's copper. So it also has 29 electrons. And so how do we write the rest of this element name? We simply take the number of neutrons plus the number of protons, and that will give us 64. All right, what about this one right here? It has 12 neutrons, and we're talking about sodium, right? We're talking about sodium, which is number 11 on the periodic table, right? Its atomic number is 11, so it has 11 protons, 11 electrons. And so now where do we get the mass number that follows the element name here? We get it by taking the neutrons plus the number of protons here. 12 plus 11 is going to be 23. All right, what about this one right here? If it has 38 electrons, it's going to have 38 protons if we're talking about a stable atom. And number 38 on the periodic table, it looks like it's going to be strontium, right? It's going to be strontium, strontium. Okay, so last but not least, what is the mass number of this isotope of strontium? Take 51 plus 38, and it looks like we're going to end up with 89. All right, and in this last one here, 20 electrons, therefore it has 20 protons in a stable atom. Uh, the number of protons always equals the number of electrons. So number 20 on the periodic table is going to be calcium. And last but not least, to get the mass number, we take the number of neutrons, which is 22, plus the number of protons. Add those together, we get 42. All right, so I hope you did well on this. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.